Aquaman The Becoming issue number one. Let's just start off by saying Jackson Hyde is the best Aquaman adjacent character. Look, I love Arthur. I love Arthur. I love Mara. I love Garth. Jackson's on a different level. He's just been, I think, consistently good since his introduction. Few hiccups here and there, of course. But the fact that DC is like, we're going to push him. It's not going to be Garth. We don't, we, we, we like Garth. We're not going to do anything with Garth. It's going to be Jackson. He's going to become Aquaman. It's amazing. It's something that has been, I think, years in the making. This guy has been primed to become the next big thing for the Aquaman universe. It never really happened. And if he becomes our mainstay Aquaman going forward, I'm on board with that. I really am. I think it works really well. I would love to see it happen. Again, it, it, everything's a shifting scale when it comes to comic books. So he could be or not be. It doesn't matter. But Jackson's the best. If you don't agree, shut up because he is. <laughs> so this book opens up. We are on Apocalypse or seemingly on Apocalypse. Jackson is there with Arthur and he's like, dude, all the Justice League's dead. It's up to you to save them. You have to go into the pits of lava and you have to get the mother box and send us all home and warn everybody before destruction happens. But Jackson goes, I'm going to die if I fall into that pit of lava. But of course, Arthur's like, dude, Aquaman could do it. So Jackson's like, oh, fine. He dives into the pit and this is where we reveal it's a simulation. So we see that Jackson reappears. The new version of Arthur walks out there. I say new version because... It's pre, it's post movie Aquaman, and he's looking a little more like Jason Momoa, but we didn't change up too much of it, you know, where he's like completely different. So he's bulky, he's got the beard and the long hair, and he's got some of the tattoos that Momoa has. And this guy, he's a family man now. Him and Mara had a daughter, her name is Andy. It's not the same kid that was suffocated by Black Manta in the early days of Aquaman. It's a new kid altogether, and he's training Jackson to take on the role of Aquaman because he's like, yeah, I'm going to be a father. It's fine. I, I love this interpretation of Arthur. It's just so casual, and that's what I think really works for Arthur. He's He'll take everything seriously, and he's not like over sarcastic like in the Bendis book. This guy's just like, dude, you'll get there. It's going to be fine. He's a little more hippie, and I think that's really important. So Mara shows up, they start kissing in front of Jackson. He's like, okay, we're getting way too comfortable. And, and Arthur goes, it's all right, man. When I come back from seeing Frankenstein on Mars, we're going to get you a boyfriend. He's like, dude, don't, <laughs> don't do this to me. You're like a weird uncle. Stop being that guy. So Jackson's got to go meet his mom. He heads to Amnesty Bay. He's just walking down the streets. Everyone loves him. They're talking to him. He said to Sam Seafood, he's talking to his mom. They're just hanging out. It's good. It's good stuff. And I think this is becoming a bigger trend in the younger heroes of comic books we're seeing their worlds diversify with like both sides of their lives you know it's like we're focusing on the aquaman stuff we have mara we have arthur there we're focusing on the aquaman stuff but hey his mom's here he's got this guy that works at the diner his name's davy he kind of likes him he's like hmm interesting stuff they're kind of getting a little cute together Jackson gets a little bit nervous, but his mom's like, oh, relax, it's fine, it's cute, it's kind of cool. But as they're just sitting down to have some food, some sirens go by, we see that Jackson springs to action, and he's going to go fight a guy called the Human Flying Fish. Stupid name, stupid costume, but it's good stuff. You know, he's on like a group call with the rest of the Teen Titans, which I, I, I know people have their reservations with the t current installation of Teen Titans, I'll say this about it. I don't like the idea. I can get behind like Raven and Beast Boy being in like the contemporary side of things, but I think Starfire should be of the same generation as Dick Grayson, as Barbara Gordon, as Roy Harper. I don't like that she's older, but in the younger generation here, I, I can handle Jackson being with like Raven and Beast Boy. I still think it's weird that Starfire is a part of this. Don't even know why she's there, but it's kind of fun. You know, they're like, dude, what happened with the human flying fish? And we just see Jackson kicks his ass because he's good at everything. And this woman who was in like the bank that the human flying fish tried to rob, she's just like upset. So Jackson comes to comfort her. And we see that there's like some people with like binoculars or like some thermal vision stuff that have been stalking Jackson throughout the book, just watching him. We get the reveal of who that is at the end of the book when Jackson goes back to Atlantis and he's getting back into like the 
projection thing where you can like try out his simulations and this weird armored up guy shows up this high-tech Atlantean guy's like you're never gonna be Aquaman you think they're gonna let some guy from Zebel become Aquaman never gonna happen bro they get into a fight but this guy is a little too tough for Jackson he kind of kicks his ass he calls for Mera to help but it's not really working the way he wants to and he kind of gets arrested by the Atlantean state and you're like hmm What's going on here? Was he set up to, like, there's some explosions in some of, like, the areas of Atlantis. It seems like Jackson got set up and was being framed by all this. Now, of course, we know he's going to get out of it and things are going to be fine. But I think this is a very strong way to start the career path for Jackson Hyde to become the Aquaman. I, I said at the beginning, I love this guy. I think he's a fantastic character. And this book really encapsulates the feeling of what an Aquaman book should be. It's fun. It's breezy. It's light. You, you got some really stellar colors in here. I really like the coloring on this book. It is so crisp and beautiful. So unique in its portrayal. I like it. And you know, Brandon Thomas, I, I'm, I'm mixed on his writing sometimes. It's good. It's, it's mediocre at times. I think there's a really good portrayal of the Aquaman universe in this book and the characters within it. At times, it does feel a little cliched in, like, the portrayal of Jackson kind of being... I, I don't want to say, like, a Miles Morales type, but you, you get the vibe of, like, that's clearly the intention that is being pushed for this character. It's, like, make him, like, you know, into the Spider-Verse feeling Miles. I, and that's fine. It's different enough, you know, where Jackson gets nervous around a cute guy. It's it's different enough where he's got, like, a supportive mother. And I know that's in the Spider-Man stuff, but I still think it works. And I, I think the artwork is very clean. It's very cool to see. I still think currently going on in the DC stuff, this is one of the best betrayals of Arthur and Mara's relationship. It's kind of rocky, but it's healthy. They love each other. They support each other. And I can, I can dig the new design for Arthur. I, I wish he was wearing the scales still. But I can support this. I think it's cool. And just having Jackson building up to be in this role, of course, it's a six-issue miniseries. So by the end of the sixth issue, he's probably going to become Aquaman. And maybe that'll lead into its own ongoing because there's no ongoing Aquaman book right now. Who knows? But I'd support it. I think it's really cool. I like what we're seeing here. Jackson Hyde is a worthy character to become the successor of Arthur Curry. It makes a lot of sense to me. I can dig it. So Aquaman the Becoming issue number one, I'm going to give an 8 out of 10. Now thank you guys for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And I will catch you in the next one. Have fun, stay safe, good luck.